And welcome to Theo Trade Chat. It's Don Kaufman here. It's a Wednesday. It's April 17th, 2024. Spoos are up some 26 handles this morning with three minutes to go. However, it feels unstable. Are you feeling unstable lately? You should be feeling unstable because the S&Ps have been... Uh, rather trendless as of yesterday and this morning. By the way, a 26-point move is absolutely nothing given the fact that we have about a $39 expected move <clears throat> today. Can't stress that enough. I was uh, I was just losing it yesterday looking at chat. People like, this is it, man. This is the trend up we've been waiting for. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I saw that in uh, chat yesterday, you know, or thereabouts, you know, versions uh, versions of that. But uh, in any regard, <clears throat> this this is not it. This is these are not the droids you're looking for. Um, the uh, yeah, I heard that one a bunch of times uh, yesterday. Bear with me here. Oh man, my wake on board is not it's not moving. Okay, I'm having issues over here. Anyway, uh, as I was saying. Yeah, yesterday, that, that one got everybody. It's the trend up we've been waiting for until we actually sold off. Just be mindful <clears throat> right now that we're uh, in the midst of some decent volatility. Yes, we're seeing a degree of upside okay, today, but this is nominal. Like 25 handles of movement uh, in the kind of volatility we're seeing uh is is basically it's it's unchanged i mean and you need to look at it that way these s and p's right now they don't matter nothing's open by the way the volume this morning is much lighter than it has been we're still though compared to a couple weeks ago we're still rocking in terms of volume we're doing 266,000 contracts that can't be wrong so look at the bond market though so the bond market's doing 176,000 contracts here's where you gotta worry that's edgy. So it rallied up. That's right there. That's why the S&Ps are up. But if the bonds revert back down, it is over, people. Look, the instability that I really see in here uh, comes by way of, uh, of NASDAQ. So NASDAQ, I mean, this thing got whacked. I'm not saying that I'm bearish on the trading session. Okay, I am not saying that I'm bearish on the trading session. I'm saying you better come in here. No chip on your shoulder. You look at the S&Ps, they're up 24. That crap does not matter. They were just up 12 a couple of moments ago, right? You're going to see some pretty heavy volatility. That is all that I'm trying to state in the pre-market. Right now, you got financials bid. You've got the energy sector, okay, that's uh, offered maybe a little bit lower. It's a hard read. The bid offer spreads wide in here. Nobody's stepping out. Obviously, oil is down today. When it comes to tech, this is going to be wild. So Microsoft has a bid under it. NVIDIA Okay, has a mild bid under it. Uh, Meta, mild bid. <clears throat> Google is basically unchanged. Apple is unchanged. It's going to be a free for all into the cash open. Remember, today's daily expected move brought to you by the SPX is 39 bucks, which is big. We're only moving 25 in the pre market. So, uh, right off time. Was that, uh, that first bell? Anyway, we're going to come into the cash open. Positive ticks, positive advance decline line. Don't get too excited just yet. Into the bell we go. Advanced decline line. It's stellar. This is almost correlation to the upside, which is not indicative of necessarily just being a good day. <laughs> you know, everybody gets that wrong when I was like, oh, look, there's 95 products trading to the upside. That actually increases the probability of uh, reversals. Look at the ticks. My, what a large tick you have. That's a positive 1,400 tick. It's huge. Okay, it's huge. Corey, who is uh, like over in Europe right now, would uh, hopefully he's watching this. Isn't it like the afternoon over there? And who goes on vacation in Europe and doesn't want to work? I mean, come on. There's volatility right now. Yeah, I hope you're hearing this, Corey. Because uh, you might be on vacation, but, uh, you know, who doesn't want to work? It's, you know, afternoon, almost the evening. Anyway, with, uh, with that being said, so we're in a strong positive tick. But uh, right out of the gate, conversation piece, of course, is that the S&Ps, <laughs> they got squirrely uh, right out of the gate. The uh, financials right now, they feel big. They feel like they're going to maintain um, the bond market. Okay, as I said, it pulled back mildly. There's no size in there right now, but 
There's also no economic data coming out today whatsoever. I don't care about the, you know, the oil report. That's not going to make a market move. It hasn't moved markets forever, but no one cares about the oil report because there's geopolitical risk packed into the, uh, the oil product anyway. In any regard, it's really important that we all just have respect for the fact that the marketplace totally shifted gears on us. It's, you know, right now, neither bullish nor bearish, it's volatile. And, and I don't like to say, oh, it's bearish. What? Because you had like one spectacular down day. One day does not make a market. Eh, Friday also, two maybe spectacular down days. Uh, that doesn't make a marketplace. But you're, you're throwing off some pretty serious amounts of volatility. Moreover, if you take a look, though, at uh, the NASDAQ, when I say we're throwing off some volatility, I'm not kidding two minutes into a trading day, look at these NASDAQ candles, right? I mean, this is a, a move from roughly 60 down to uh, what, you know, 30? I'm just throwing that off. So 30 handle candle, 30 handle candle, followed by a 25 point move in the uh, preceding moment after, okay? So as I said to you, you try to handicap like a 21 or 22 point move inside of the S&Ps, you only have to look back at yesterday. And again, even last night, the middle of the night, forget about like news. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the news happens to be. Okay. You know, you, you can't blame the news. You just got to trade what's on the tape. But uh, yesterday, here's a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six minute move. We moved from roughly, let's call it the 90 handle. Okay. To the what? 20 handle. Okay. That's a 30 point move inside of roughly, we'll call this six minutes. Six minutes and 30 S&P handles later. Uh, and then we reverted right back down in the preceding, we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six minutes preceding. So uh, that's, yeah, that's, again, you know, that's volatility. Um, you got to have a little bit of respect for it. I, again, I am not saying that I'm neither bullish nor bearish. I am saying, though, the expected move today is exactly $39. Let's actually write it up on the screen. So uh, it's the third time I've already mentioned it this morning. Is this crap, it's important. So the expected move is plus or minus 39 bucks, okay? And that's SPX daily expected move. When we've only moved roughly 20, where are we right now? We've moved basically half, we've moved nothing. And that's, that's exactly why like I have issue, and I, I do take issue, with people trying to figure out whether this is going to be a trend day, a range day, okay? Uh, I take issue with it because you need to check that crap at the door. Um, <clears throat> you really wanna know what kind of a day it is? It's a day where you better watch the bond market because the bond market's threatening to sell back off here. If it does, it's good night S&Ps. Like you just, you can't take any more sell side in the bonds. I mean, that's, that's my opinion and I'm sticking with it. The volume in here has been absolutely massive. It's been brutal, okay? It's been just relentless uh, sell side <clears throat> inside of the bond market. And if you haven't looked at the TNX, okay? I mean, this thing is, where is it on the year? Um, just to give you a feel, the TNX is literally from like low, absolute low to where it is. <clears throat> it's almost a hundred basis points, almost a full 1% move which again, categorically like, yeah, who cares? You know, it's interest rates, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you should care because at some point in there, it's not about the rate. It's not about trying to handicap the rate. It's about figuring out at what point does it just go crack and the whole marketplace spills open and uh, whatever comes out, comes out. One thing uh, out of the gate this morning, there's some selling in uh, Meta. <clears throat> the last four minutes have not been kind to Meta. You take Meta down, this is uh, obviously an underlying <clears throat> that is, you know, a week removed from it is its all time high. It's basically unscathed at this point. It's going to be well worth watching in the uh, in the hours to come here. Bear with me for just one second. I'm already starting with the coffee. Uh, like I haven't had any before. Yes. Eh? Okay. Nobody likes Tesla anymore. NVIDIA. NVIDIA had a bid, faded a little bit, right? 
<clears throat> it's going to be kind of a wait and see tape. With that, we are going to uh, we're going to look around at some individual stocks almost right off the bat. Because I mean, today it kind of feels like a little bit of like a wait and see kind of trading session. Look, uh, you are right now on the week quite a bit lower. <clears throat> so kind of zoom into this. The week started here at uh, 51.23. I, I know this looks like a spectacular candle, but what really happened here is we rallied 50 handles and then we dropped like a rock from there. Whatever. I mean, it's it, it was a 50 you know plus point move, but <clears throat> it just looks quite magnificent because we hit a high first and then reversed. Um, one interesting uh, kind of facet: the S and P's did sell off overnight. In theory, the S&Ps okay, kind of did tag the lower edge of the expected move in the after hours. I'm just showing you, um, <clears throat> obviously, there's a pricing difference from the ES to the SPX. Nevertheless, there was some big volume in the overnight trade right down here. And again, I want to put this uh, up on the screen to 50.75. The reason I'm bringing up the 5075 is <clears throat> it could become memorable and in play as this day progresses. Uh, again, we've seen some pretty fierce reversals uh, in most of the recent trading sessions. Uh, there's nothing, nothing on the screen that leads me to believe uh, that that is necessarily in the cards today. Uh, nevertheless, when I talk about some fierce reversals, this is what I'm talking about. Those are fierce reversals with uh, 40 and 50 point moves higher before dropping. <clears throat> so again, really important for today's trading session. You know, uh, <clears throat> you're not even halfway home to the upper edge of the expected move. So, you know, this is not an easy place, okay, to want to jump on board, uh, either long nor short, because there's nothing to go on right now. And I mean, when I say there's nothing to go on, I mean, like, look at the tape. There's nothing to go on right now. You know, the bonds might be reverting back up. That's the most bullish thing I can say about it. But <clears throat> the interesting thing is the NASDAQ, okay, is kind of trailing a little bit. Meta's recouped to some degree, but it's only basically flat. The, uh, the NASDAQ on a percentage basis, though, is kind of underperforming. And that's, that's rough for the ability to want uh, to trade it intraday. If you want to look for signs of a rally, <clears throat> the places to be, okay, right now it's actually Microsoft holding this whole marketplace together. Microsoft's up almost, almost a full percent. There's your, uh, there's your market in a nutshell is Microsoft. Meanwhile, NVIDIA is about to see some selling and uh, take the NASDAQ back off. Just a quick glance over at NVIDIA, some of the uh, activity in here. There's no call buying here whatsoever. Not really any put buying either. Uh, activity is very, very light this morning inside of NVIDIA, which uh, primarily means that it's just going to float around a little bit uh, until it, uh, uh, again, until there's some heavier order flow. Very easy. <clears throat> you know, uh, what Ron was saying, don't they have to short squeeze again? So it's it's not like there's no short squeezing, okay? At like levels like this, when you see the dynamic of trade is down, you know, and up, this is often dynamic hedging <clears throat> that drives a lot of these moves. Okay. It's, it's not so much covering shorts is these trading firms. The second that there's buy side, they have to buy in the dynamic of the marketplace. But what I've been seeing <clears throat> day in and day out is something that I mentioned even Monday of this week, and I'm going to reiterate it today because a lot of people, you know, they're not they're not really paying attention. Look, uh, a lot of retail trade right now, okay, is very very nervous, and rightfully so. Like they haven't been in any selling in roughly five months. There's been no selling whatsoever in five months. So if you're in retail and you own a portfolio or you own a couple of stocks, you're at this point where you're like, I might have to get out of some of my position or all of my position. Okay. Uh, ironically, there's probably a lot of, you know, fund managers like that too. So every bid to the marketplace is being sold into almost immediately. 
people are looking at this point for exits. Okay. They're starting to look for the exit. You look for the exit. The second you go for the exit. Okay. Uh, when the market starts to rally. Okay. It's an opportunity to get it out. The market starts to rally. It's an opportunity to get out. And that is what I believe we're starting to see. And we're just right at the cusp of it. And uh, why would I say it's the cusp of it? Well, you can't have that much sell side activity that's transpired because most of your tech stocks basically at all time highs, which kind of leads to my, uh, my opinion in here is that, uh, again, outside of what you see on the screen today, and it's fine, whatever. If we rally today, we rally. But outside of what you see on the screen today, now tech is really going to start to take center stage. Okay. And it has to take center stage. It's very scary that we have seen some degree of selling in here. This is not on a, on a percentage basis, pull up the spiders. Okay. On a year to date, we were up basically 11%. Now we're up 7%. So let's just say for argument's sake, you pulled back by four, you know, percent. So it's it's a decline of four percent. Remember, ten percent would be a correction. We haven't seen a correction in you know a very long time. Neither here nor there. I don't care about the ten percent, but I'm showing you that the pullback here hasn't been dramatic, okay? Uh, and my concern is that people think that this is real selling. They haven't actually seen any real selling yet, because you can't have Microsoft, you know basically two, three days removed from its all-time high. I know you guys are looking, it's an all-time high is here. Yeah, it was also basically there, right there, there. It's three days ago. I mean, it's insane because people are looking and they're like, ah, it's going to be okay. Okay, maybe it is going to be okay. But if uh, if markets do decide to go for it, they're coming for you, Meta. They're going to come for Meta. Clearly, they're going to be coming for Google. So Google is legit four days, not even a full four days, four days away from its all-time high. You wouldn't even be surprised if you looked at expected move. You wouldn't be surprised Google within its normal move could hit its all-time high today. So whatever, and, and regardless of whatever you might believe about some of the sell side activity right now, because it's geopolitical, it's this, it's that, it does not matter. Stop getting caught up in all the crap around why you think they're selling and start to understand, okay, that if we go down just a little bit further from here, then it, it becomes real, okay? Um, it's, uh, then it becomes very, very real. Hmm. Um, very important though on, um, on that particular front because, uh, well, you know, look, I think we're at a pretty pivotal place. The volatility futures say it today. Uh, the bonds are basically screaming it. Speaking of the bonds, they're starting to sell off a little bit in the backdrop over here. All the volatility indicates it. I mean, we're basically right now, we're at the crossroads. And whether the market's going to go for it or not, it's kind of a different story. It wouldn't take much to kind of push that marketplace over the edge. Um, but as I said, we'll... Uh, We'll see how it plays, you know, and that's, uh, if you think I have preconceived notions about what this is going to look like a week from now, you'd actually be wrong, okay? I'm not all bared up with no place to go. Uh, I'm kind of sitting here realizing that we're at that crossroads and like this kind of movement here, you can't handicap five minutes into the future, much less five days, okay? And that really is the truth of the marketplace right now. Um and if you, you don't like that, that's okay. But, you know, take positions right now. I like to, in positions like right now, I don't want to be selling a lot of puts, okay? I'm going to say that again. I don't want to sell a lot of puts. I think that selling a lot of puts, even in uh, catapults, I only have like a three lot of puts sold in some catapults, okay? I don't want to sell a lot of puts right now. Why, okay? Well, because I don't know what five days from now is going to look like. It's not the geopolitical risk that intimidates me, okay? It's the five other catalysts that I can't even think of that intimidate me, okay? It's the fact that the bonds are right on the edge. Like at what point, 
the bonds will sell off. You start looking at regional banks. Okay, here's regional banks. This is the regional bank ETF. No one's talking about the fact that these regional banks, okay, could be uh, under duress right now, any day. One of the regional banks could go up in flames, reigniting issues that we saw just over a year ago. March of 23, okay, we had our own little uh, short duration banking crisis. Let's actually pull up a full year in here. Crap, I have to pull up more than a year. Okay, we're getting old, people. Anyway, uh, here it is. This is actually the regional banks. They got crushed last year. It's kind of ironic. We're just north of what crushed looked like. Crushed looked like that 42.50 level, trading 46 and change. We had rallied out. They've actually pulled back a little bit. If the bonds continue to see any selling, okay, I think these regional banks are going to be uh, under some very very serious pressure in uh, in days to come you know if again if the bonds continue to sell off it's actually something i considered in these uh regional you know banks is a sort of in and out spread you know that that would be something that would be under consideration but i mean we're kind of already shorting into a marketplace that's down. Like, I think we need more of a pop to the upside. And I've been looking for an entry into this for like the past week. And if, uh, if you will, I can pull this up on the auto expected moves, check this out in the expected moves. Um, this is not a good setup for a bearish position because we broke through last week. Okay. And the week before it. So you're in two consecutive weeks of getting smashed to the lower edge. Okay, two consecutive weeks have smashed to the lower edge of expected move. Now you have a bid back under us. We'll see. Okay, we'll see how it goes. Um, <clears throat> there is no more, you know, of anything other than, you know, the bonds in here. Okay, it doesn't matter what you think of KRE. Uh, if it bounces to 48, I think it's a great short. If it bounces though, and it's, I mean, bouncing to 48 looks pretty extreme, but. 47 half, 48, if it bounces that far, I think it's going to be, again, a great short. But at this point, it's not in KRE's hands, not in the regional bank's hands, it's in the hands of the bonds. Um, and it's it's the same thing like right now in the bond market, okay? You wouldn't see me want to short the bond market. Well, why? Okay, the bond market has one breach right here, okay? basically hit the lower edge of the expected move last week, and this week is already outside. It's basically three consecutive weeks. Um, that's, you know, this is really horrendous. That's uh, about as ugly as it gets. If you look at the SPX, just to compare, the SPX, okay, has had a rough couple of weeks as well. So effectively, because we're starting to, now, now we're starting to pay attention, we closed very close to the lower edge of expected move two weeks ago. Last week, we basically closed in the lower edge of expected move. Okay, We've seen a bid back. Okay, We've seen another bid back. Both bid backs have been faded. That's why I said you're in some serious two-sided trade. The lower edge of the expected move is still wide open for this week. It has not officially been tagged during trading hours but it's, uh, that thing could be on the dance floor. So <clears throat> just be aware, there's a lot to think about in this marketplace. The one thing though, that I continually reiterate, okay, you can't handicap, we're gonna be five minutes from now. Don't tell me you know where we're going five days from now. And when I come on here and I say stuff like that, okay, I know like Gianni is more into like cycles and so forth. He's gonna give you what he sees, you know, in the cyclicality of it. Um, but this, this volatility where again, we're right in this junction where, eh, this is where things can just crack apart. Uh, and we've seen this, I don't know, a couple hundred times during my trading career. When I say crack apart, like, you know, that we have a precipitous break in markets. Okay. Uh, because tech hasn't even begun to sell, you know, it's, it's not even the start of sell side activity in products that look like this. 
And I just, I cannot stress that enough. When you have most of your major tech stocks at highs, right? The energy sector, it's come in a little bit, but it's literally, literally, you know, what, three days removed, three and a half days removed from its all time, well, recent high, shouldn't say all time high, because uh, there was a time, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, it was 2014, um, you know, it's a decade ago, that, that thing hit its, uh, its highs. Anyway, with, uh, with that, NASDAQ is uh, looking like it's going to go negative, NVIDIA is actually taking it, taking it there. This is the kind of trade that you're going to see, though because there's no catalyst today. So what do we do? Okay, well, we start screwing around in individual underlyings again. Back to NVIDIA, over here to option statistics. And uh, bear with me as I kind of dig into this. Look at this. There's actually some put buying going on in there. How very exciting, very exciting. Hmm. And again, I'm not ready to call this, you know, uh, uh, the bear. Okay. And, and I really am not, I, uh, look, everybody knows I'm carrying, you know, uh, short deltas. I'm still carrying negative deltas in here, but <clears throat> neither here nor there doesn't, doesn't make a difference what, you know, my position is, it's not going to make a difference what I think. Okay. The only thing, you know, I know is that bonds have got us on the edge. Volatility is primed, uh, to the point of real concern, by the way, the volatility futures that you're now looking at have rolled forward, okay? So we're looking at 35 day now, which are May's, okay? If you're looking at this evolve future, you're like, oh man, they dropped, okay? No, they didn't drop. This was some, uh, I'll say it nicely. Somebody made a bad decision as to, this is supposed to be the roll, but they really rolled it here because they don't know what the beep they're doing anymore. Um, anyway, <laughs> this is it's a bunch of freaking monkeys running this thing now. Okay. <clears throat> in the chat room earlier this morning, I saw a couple of individuals, not to name any names. One of them was Doji. Um, <clears throat> there were a couple individuals in here talking about closing an account and that some brokerage firms charge money to close your brokerage account. Okay. So the reason I'm bringing this, this up is because obviously I see some issues right now, like on the platform and so forth. Okay. That's, you know, it's what I did for like 15 years is looked for issues in the platform, because if I can see them before you, you can usually tell the dev team, like this doesn't look right. You know, there's only a couple of us and nobody spent more time on this platform uh, probably than I have other than, you know, well, actually probably nobody at this point. <laughs> Because the rest of that team went over to like Tasty. So basically nobody. So you can see some issues in the platform. Anyway, we used to have like, you know, executive meetings about fees on accounts. And one of the things that used to come up is like when somebody closes a brokerage account, okay, there was a policy years ago at TD Ameritrade that when somebody closed an account, I think it was like a 50 or 75, I think it was $75. Then they dropped it to a $50 charge to close an account. So... <clears throat> Uh, the question then came up is what does it cost the brokerage firm to keep the account open for somebody that, for instance, that only has like $5 in the account? And the answer is it's a few hundred dollars a year because if the account is open, they still technically have to pay data fees. Data fees are the most expensive fees on you. Okay. So they have to pay for data. There's, there's a lot of crap. There's maintenance. They got to pay for, you know, compliance with the account, yada, yada, yada. It can cost them a few hundred dollars a year to keep your account open. So um, TD Ameritrade eventually did away with account closing fees. Okay. And they did. Uh, why did they do that? Well, because, you know, people like me were like, this is so stupid. Don't charge somebody to close the account uh, because they'll do something crazy, like leave a penny in there. So my advice to you is if anybody charges to close a brokerage account, one penny, okay? One penny. <laughs> Just leave that in there because they have to still send you quarterly statements. You can get the quarterly statement, rip it open. You're like, ah, every single quarter, it's like Christmas when you realize you're screwing them. <laughs> you're screwing the man. Um, it really brings me deep joy to, to think that somebody in here is probably going to do that. So uh, 
I had a uh, a bank that I did minimal business with. I did a, a mortgage with. This is going back like I don't know five years or so. <clears throat> I did a mortgage with a bank, and I had refi it at one point. And <clears throat> that bank, they were not good, <laughs> not good. They were they were not good. They were really pissing me off. So they made me open a savings account to get a mortgage. So originally I had to put like $20 into the savings account. I didn't want to bank with them. So I put $20 into the savings account and was able to do this mortgage with them. Okay. Uh, consequently, you know, eventually I uh, totally forgot about it. It's like 20 bucks, but they were charging inactivity fees in the account. And they got the account down to one penny and they're like, calling me like every other day, sir, you've got to put more money in the account so we can charge you more inactivity fees. Um, I said, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. There's no, there's nothing in there. They're like, but, but we need to close the account. Okay. So if you want to close the account and send me the rest of the money, cause I don't have a mortgage with you anymore. And they go, yeah, but it costs money to close the account and you don't have any money in the account. So you got to come here. And I was like, no, okay. I'm, I'm, I blocked their number. <laughs> I still get, I still get bank statements from them. And I make sure that they have to mail me the bank statements. Okay. Know that, you know, you, you got to get actual paper. I know it's wrong for the tree people. The tree people don't like it, but uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't get on my bad side, man. Don't get on my bad side. Okay. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of like when Kramer was screwing with the cable guy. Okay. Not too far from that. Hmm. Uh it, uh, again, it makes me smile coming from that industry, knowing how annoying that really is. NVIDIA is seeing some real sell side activity uh, along with Meta. So there is a, a hint of selling in the air uh, as uh, Microsoft comes in as well. Microsoft is what's kind of holding this marketplace together. Meanwhile, uh, Google, okay, as I said to you guys moments ago, Google could hit all time highs literally today, but the S&Ps are kind of pulling back over here. Look, just let this evolve today. Give it some time. There's no reason to force, uh, you know, trades over here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm cracking myself up over here. I think I, I pissed off the tree people. <laughs> the paper, the paper statements coming to the house. Uh, most of the brokerage firms now, I think they charge you like two dollars or something a month, or two dollars a statement if you get like the paper brokerage things. I don't know if you guys remember, but like 15, 20 years ago, the brokerage firms had to send statements to you for every single trade. Like they had to send trades to you in uh, the mail. Uh, there was, it wasn't allowed for electronic communications. Like email was not allowed. I don't know how many years ago, it could even be 15, 20 years ago, but my wife would go get the mail. It's like right after we're married. So it was definitely in, uh, in like 2008, 2009, 2010, they still had that rule. Um, it was uh, it was ridiculous because I remember like stacks coming to me every day. I mean, because you know I would trade throughout the course of the week, and they were individual statements, different brokerage firms, and so forth. It was crazy. It's crazy how much mail I was getting on that crap. Uh, I had to trade last save a tree. Man, Tesla. They do not like this stock right now before the earnings are coming out. Speaking of earnings, the only thing really big this week is going to be Netflix. So Netflix is coming out. Netflix, for those of you that know, I call Netflix the widow, the widow maker of uh, naked options. Uh, don't ever sell naked in Netflix. You know, not like a superstitious individual, quite literal individual. When I say Netflix, okay, it'll finish you. Netflix is known for four and five Sigma moves. That one doesn't scare you, okay? It should, because this was a 490 to a 540, which is exactly 50 bucks, which ironically is the expected move this time around its earnings. Its earnings though are tomorrow after the bell. So I'll be more than happy to, uh, to talk you through a little bit of Netflix, uh, maybe tomorrow, because right now it's, it's not doing it for me. By the way, bear with me here for two seconds. I have got to answer another trader. So uh, hang with me here for just a second.
we're back. Sorry about that. I'm just over here typing like intensely and trying to read exactly what they're uh, telling me over here. So uh, I have a buddy that I talk to constantly throughout the course of the trading session that uh, he sees things. He sees things in the marketplace. <clears throat> so VIX is actually falling down. This doesn't mean all that much. It's like exactly what we're talking about. So VIX is falling down. doesn't mean that much. But um, everyone on the street right now, they're looking very carefully at this, this contango, this backwardation. It's really, really close. It's within 40 cents. You're, you're basically in these volatility futures have 40 cents. Any more sell side in here, just the slightest more of sell side in here can push us into the backwardation of volatility. <clears throat> and that's kind of what everybody is indicating would be the big threshold for a major break in markets. Moreover, the bonds uh, are starting to see some real selling going on. As I said to you guys earlier, though, <clears throat> excuse me, as I said to you guys earlier, the uh, there's no real catalyst today. So markets kind of left to their own devices. Um, the, the fact of the matter is, though, if we start running a little bit downhill, today is the day people are going to start to really bail the positions because this is, this is, you know, a week into selling and there's not going to be any easy explanation other than the markets are going to sell off. Meaning that, you know, you start seeing a couple of days of selling, people get nervous, right? Uh, some of you are nervous right now with long portfolios. Come on, who's long the market right now and nervous? You can just say me in the chat room, okay? Are you long right now and nervous? And that's it's okay to be that way. I mean, you saw basically what I would call two big days of selling back here, though, just an expansive volatility. Like volatility is clearly, you know, uh, cracked open. But the uh, the uh, what's at issue right now is it, it takes a couple of those days back to back and people uh, really start to get edgy. Uh, and again, it's when they start looking at the door and then they start going for the door. So, uh, hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, another trader talking to me over here. Sorry, I get the alerts on my watch. <laughs> People are seeing things right now. You know what? I'm looking at the screen and I'm thinking to myself right now, I'm just going to tell you guys something. I'm looking at the screen. I'm thinking to myself, it's kind of quiet morning. We're 35 minutes into the trading day. But I will say this, the chatter on both Skype and me being texted by a buddy of mine is fairly extreme today. Uh, I don't necessarily know why, like I don't see it. And that's exactly what I'm saying to you. I don't see it. But uh, what was just pointed out to me, like the contract size in the S&Ps is consistent and fairly large for such a quiet trading session. Like there's contract size flowing through here. This doesn't mean that we tank or anything like that. It just means that this trading session, okay, is considerably uh, more active at this point, all right? <clears throat> this thing is considerably more active at this point in the day than I think people are gonna give it credit for. So a lot of the big tech stocks are seeing some selling. Again, I wanna come back to NVIDIA for just one moment, and then I'm gonna go into uh, some trade specifics. NVIDIA is seeing put buying right now. That looks like it's actually forcing the product lower. It's not though, it's seven bucks. It's nothing at this point, nothing. Uh, this would have to really like, you know, call me when it's down 30, 40 points and I'll start to pay attention. Speaking of NVIDIA, it's expected move for the remainder of the week. It's right around 30 points. So there's no question NVIDIA could have a big day today uh, and is at the forefront of whatever we're seeing in the slippage of this NASDAQ. So NASDAQ has gone negative. The only reason the S&Ps are positive, you have uh, financials holding them together and obviously the energy sector. You believe the energy sector, okay? Does not wanna, uh, doesn't wanna give up just yet. Anyway, let's come into positions, talk a little bit about them. Yesterday, I did place a Costco trade and that is still absolutely there. If anybody wants it, look, I can see 221 more contracts traded through today. So I put this trade on, uh, well, here, go to my account statement. Okay. I put the trade on at 218 and 211. Okay.
current price, 225. There's no question. Like, I think I sent this one out at a 218. It was an easy fill yesterday. You can absolutely fill this right now in and around 218. So it's basically unchanged from yesterday. Um, just be aware, you know, that that trade is still completely there. It's available to you. Uh, why the Costco trade? For the most part, it had a good bid back. Looked like it could see some sell side activity, but I'm all over like the retail stocks right now. Walmart has seemingly impervious to selling, but Walmart also, like we were going to be dealing with earnings uh, a month out. So if you take a look at, again, the earnings in Walmart are on the uh, May 16th. And I kind of wanted to use the May 17th expiration, which for Walmart, it's just not going to happen. I can't, I, you know, I couldn't use Walmart because it was only going to give me 23 days to expiration. I would definitely consider the position there. So in lieu of Walmart, I went after Costco. I think if the marketplace sees some good selling, which we're on the cusp of, uh, Costco will follow suit. In terms of expected moves, I also love the fact that this thing has just been volatile. I mean, it's outside the expected move. It's outside an expected move. It's outside the expected move. It's all I can ask for. Like, I'm not going to sit here and preach to you that it's going higher or lower. Look, I have the put spread on. Okay, but it could be higher and lower, and I'll I'll still play out very nicely at this point. All right. Um, let's uh, let's continue onward over here. So as I said to you, the other trade that I'm considering right now for in out spreads is in KRE. KRE though has got to rally. Okay, quite a bit more. All right, for me to uh, for me to want to get into it. All right, um, bear with me here a second. So uh, again, KRE has got to uh, got to get a bid back under it before I. I think it's this is like really shorting into a pretty big hole. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stave off and not uh, do that one. What else do I have on right now? I did put on a uh, a trade in XLF yesterday for Catapult. Just to explain it, but in Catapult, I'm bullish in XLF. I'm bullish in XLF. Does it merely mean I'm bullish in XLF? I'm like, no, but it hasn't had like an uptick. I think it's actually a decent idea. Uh, I'm bullish in XLF and I financed it in the MES. So some of you guys that are in the Catapult portfolio, that is uh, available to you. Um, bullish to the extent where, look, if the S&Ps are going to revert back higher, okay, I think that the XLF would have to be on the forefront of the buy side in there. Hmm. Continuing on from there. Um, oh yeah, a couple of earnings stocks right now. United Airlines. Uh, United Airlines, good size bid to the uh, to the upside. So they lost less money than anticipated. I have to love that kind of crap. Huh? Okay, who's the biggest loser? They are clearly they are, but uh, the marketplace loved it. You know the. The airline stocks are so freaking volatile, but so difficult to trade right now. I mean, there's enough liquidity in these things, but look at the volatility, generally speaking, in airlines. You know, uh, airlines, again, they're totally it's tradable, tradable marketplace, no question. Tighter bid off or spreads, everything from American Airlines to uh, United Airlines, and people are constantly looking for stuff to trade. This it's in play. It's no question they're in play right now. I'm always surprised by what is kind of in play in terms of like what we trade. I mean, United Airlines has 100,000 contracts on it today, but it has earnings. But if you take a look at American Airlines, this does not have earnings. It still has 35,000 contracts on it. Look at something like Costco. Costco only has like 5,000 contracts on it. Granted, Costco is a $700 behemoth. Looking over at like Caterpillar today, I've been shopping trades in Caterpillar, but it's uh, it's just dead in terms of uh, liquidity and it has earnings. I mean, I'm totally aware it has earnings, but I was looking for a longer duration position in there. Even that though, I'm a little concerned. And by the way, NASDAQ is uh, taking us lower right now inside of the S and P's. So uh, we just broke through 5,100, but what you're seeing on the screen right now is almost exclusively uh, uh, NASDAQ stocks that are bringing us down specifically 
you've got uh, NVIDIA, which again, I can see off the side of my uh, screen over here, the number of puts trading is picking up. This is one of the first times you're seeing a, uh, you know, what's often dispersion trade, but traders are basically buying puts and it's forcing the stock lower. $11 though, or $12 is pretty negligible uh, at this point in time. You know, it's a 1% move. You got to start getting, as I said, 3% moves. And that's why I'm kind of coming in today. Again, I kind of think eh, it may be a little bit of a mundane trading session with uh, a hint, a flare of volatility could happen. Okay. It's largely uh, based on what these volatility futures are going to look like. You know, none of us, okay. When I say none of us, a, a lot of traders that I talk to, none of us have ever really seen the vol futures become so active so quickly uh, near what we term backwardation with a marketplace that's like legitimately just faded a little bit. Like the marketplace has had like two really big down days, maybe three total. And we're already talking about contango, which is, you know, contango versus backwardation, which seems crazy. In fact, for those of you, um, I'm just going to take you into something that's maybe a little bit obscure. So bear with me here. What you're looking at on thinkorswim is called product depth. Okay. And you see two different like curves over here. It's a snake followed by another snake. Um, no, let me, uh, let me go in here and fix. I got to fix my curves. Okay. What kind of curves do you got? Anyway, get rid of all series. We're going to come in here and just look at, uh, you know, May, June, July. In fact, uh, yeah, May, June, July. Let's make sure that this is accurate. Okay. It is. So this is May, June, July. This, okay, is kind of what volatility looks like right now. And what you're looking at is it's the May volatility futures, the June volatility futures, and the July volatility futures. And we're still, when a curve looks like this, it's, you know, uh, construed as contango, contango. Okay. And I can add like another one in here. Right. And you can see that contango mm, starts to kind of mellow out a little bit the further you go out. So what would it look like if we were in backwardation? If I go to the curve and I go add curve, right? And come back in the calendar. So there's history to this. I believe that the last time we saw some real uh, real hideous selling, somewhere right around here maybe, okay? Maybe even a few days before that, okay? Um, where the hell did my curve? Where did my curve go? Anyway, so here, and we got to go back to this curve and knock down nine series. Here's a curve that is very different. Son of a, this thing isn't even working properly. Okay, look at this. It's showing like more on here. Anyway, you're getting a better feel now for this was almost like flat vol skew. Okay, this is much more of a contango. And, and then you can actually take them, kind of put them on like a percentage view to see what they really look like, you know, next to one another. So, and, and again, the selling that we're talking about, I'm going to go back to the charts for a second, bring up the spiders, the selling we were talking about somewhere in here. Okay. You know, some big selling, maybe on the uh, 26th, you can go back and look on that particular date on the date in question. I'll go back to like the 26th. Okay. You can see there's a very, very, God, this thing constantly screws up every time I change the friggin' date. Okay, this is technically in like backwardation right here. Okay, um, and then you can compare them on a percentage basis, just right here. You can put them on the same time scale. Okay, on a percentage basis, it's kind of a cool way to look at it. Okay, this is in fits of rage. This is getting very, very, very close to fits of rage, and it's. It's kind of a weird way to show people, but most people have never seen like, you know, depth curves. And that's what this really is. It's, it's a depth chart. It's actually showing you um, multiple expiration cycles plotted on one chart. It's not about whether it goes up or down. It's definitely, it's the shape of the curve. But I'm trying to show you what a very, very mild backwardation would look like. Uh, but lo and behold, we're pretty freaking close to it. It may not look like it, 
when you look at a curve like this, but some of the curves are like, they're totally steep. This one has really uh, come down quite, uh, quite considerably. I'll give you another comparison here. The other comparison, let's get rid of this additional curve. We're gonna add another curve. We're just gonna look, okay, a few weeks ago. If you just look back uh, a few weeks ago into like, you know, mid-March, I'm just picking an obscure day in like March. Okay, bear with me here. The curve was much steeper, okay, back in March than it is right now. So the shape of volatility has changed. And again, for the first time people look at this, eh, all right, okay. But this is kind of what a lot of traders in the industry are looking at right now because they're getting a feel like there's clearly some, some change in the air. By the way, this is kind of a cool look too. That's uh, how substantial volatility has moved. So I'm comparing a volatility skew here. This skew here is back in March. This one is present time. So why do I care? Because look how much the shape of the curve, it doesn't look like a huge amount. We can even put in, I think there's a delta uh, in here that you can actually put in. Take it off here. Okay, there you go. There's actually a delta which shows you Okay, the distance in here, and it's shallowing uh, considerably. Anyway, kind of a cool thing to look at, but that's what a lot of people in the industry are looking at right now. And it just all comes down to, you know, when's this, this animal going to break? Is it going to break? And they look, you know, at cues in there for how close volatility is to showing real risk. Mm. All right. Um, so, uh, hopefully everybody's got the Costco trade. Okay. Um, Jim Barry was saying, so when do you get out of the XLF? What do you mean? When do I get out of the XLF? I have no idea when I get out of the XLF. If you're talking about the XLF catapult trade, we may have to rally a lot, but I don't know when I get out of it because I don't know, did the ES position financing it? already get closed. The coolest thing about Catapult is, you know, I had somebody shoot me an email a couple of weeks ago and they said, hey, they said, I pay for Catapult and yet you're talking about it while you're live. I'm like, Absolutely. Okay. Because Catapult is not about finding the trades. Catapult is, is about managing the trades because there's so many different variations of being able to get out. Money is made not in finding Catapult. Money is made in the Catapult and managing the Catapult. I mean, that's, that's what it really comes down to. It's like how you manage that catapult. But if we rally on financials tomorrow and the S&Ps rally, eh, I may have to manage out of the position for a while. I have a few of those on, okay? But I've also got some free rides on right now too. I have a free ride in Tesla. Tesla's not doing anything for me, but I closed the call that financed Tesla. Um, Tesla position, you're like, oh man, it's down 50%. Still has 30 days left and Tesla has earnings. Tell me Tesla can't move thirty dollars or even twenty dollars. It can, and I would be right back in the uh, in the uh, in the wheelhouse over here. So uh, I'm surprised to see again uh, tech leading us somewhat lower over here. Nvidia though is uh, is going to be well worth watching throughout the course of the trading session. As I stated a couple of times here though, this is a fairly mild move to where it uh, could be. Microsoft has come all the way back down. It feels like a lot of pressure into Nasdaq. But we're not like going for it at this point. And we'll see how it plays out. All right, what else do I have? Eh, not much. There's a couple of other off the beaten path stocks that have earnings. Just again, be mindful of where we are on the week. Okay. I always say this like on a Wednesday, but right now we're still, in my opinion, just a hop, skip, and a jump off the lower edge of the expected move. Lower edge of the expected move right now is 50.23. So you're about 25 points we'll call it 30 points uh, into the lower edge of the expected move. What is kind of cool, if you look at this, and the point that I was trying to make this morning, look where the S&P is bottomed this morning, okay? All right, you think that's a, a little suspect over there? Yeah, maybe, maybe, coincidence? I think not! The S&P is bottomed this morning, very, very close to what would be the SPX lower edge of the expected move. Now, again, the specifics for the lower edge of the expected move, as I was saying a moment ago, it's about 5023. So that is a number, okay? 
in SPX. And again, this is SPX term. That is a number that should be seared into your brain at this point. Uh, if we are going to go lower, that's your target. Now, are we going to get there? Eh, throw your hands up in the air. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. There's a pretty good probability, though, with hedging activity. If we just drift a little bit lower, you got to drift in the uh, SPX. I think you got to drift in like basically 50, 35. If you drift to 50, 35, which is, uh, you know, 20 points, away, you're going to definitely get driven right into it. So a little bit more drift to the downside and all of a sudden you're home. You know, you'd be right into it. Uh, and it does appear that that's what's going to transpire today. Um, again, far be it for me, like if you if you notice on days like this, um, there's times where we're in the midst of some volatility and you get a really good feel. And, you, and a lot of people are like, holy crap, the last couple of weeks, you've had a really good feel. And they do. And then there's times like this where there's no catalyst around this marketplace. The volume in the S&Ps for nothing going on, the volume in the S&Ps ain't bad. I mean, we're still doing like, you know, oh, on average of almost 4,000 contracts a minute in here. So the volume's not bad, okay? The volatility, don't be surprised if volatility is down a little bit today. We've been through some serious crap. So start, starting to cool off a little bit, but uh, volatility, okay, it's cooled off. The bond market's all over the place. Again, there's not a lot to go on. And the one thing you got to recognize about volatility is it's just that, you know, you are on right now, Mr. Toad's wild ride. Like I can see very clearly those, you know, days leading into volatility. What I mean by that is like, I can see really clearly, like I can get a feel as we're starting to walk down the, uh, you know, the, uh, the roller coaster into the volatility. But once you're actually in it, it's very, very difficult to see whether they're really going to go for it. Like, Again, I would not, under any circumstances, call this heavy bearish activity because it's not. You're just, volatility is emerging. You're seeing expansive ranges, but we're on the cusp of seeing a break. And a break would be very significant. We haven't seen a 3% day. We haven't even seen really a 2% day. Um, a 3% day immediately snaps us, okay, into, you know, like, what, 4950 territory. This is the crap that you should be thinking about as a trader, okay? Don't, you know, uh, don't look at anything. Don't listen to anything. These are levels that you should really be thinking about. Obviously, this 5023 is critical. But if we have uh, a more significant snap in the marketplace, the SPX would be trading 4900, okay? That is where some damage is really being inflicted upon the marketplace. That can happen one day. Why? Because a 3% move today takes us okay, to 4,900, which is basically almost reverting back to unchanged on the entire year. Do not be surprised okay, if that's the way we play. It's Again, everybody wants to point geopolitical risk. Neither here nor there. Okay, Today's trade, though, specifically today, okay, uh, you can only handicap what's right in front of you. You know, you're not going to get a feel today. Uh, and moreover, I mean, this is actually proofs in the pudding over here. You could be bid back up by 50 handles. Remember, you're on a $39 expected move today uh, without a feel in this market. And that's, you know, you're blind walking into it. It's tough on trading sessions like this. If you were trading like some NASDAQ futures, book a couple of handles, duck, get back, okay, don't do anything crazy out there right now. Um, when you're trading, spreads are probably a good thing. I mean, intraday trades, you can do whatever you want. Spreads might be a good thing. Okay. Why spreads? Keep with like in out spreads, define your risk. Okay. Right for at least the time being. I don't care what we think the market's going to do, but for the time being, I am not rushing into the fire here to sell naked puts. I will sell naked puts, but we want to see a more precipitous break. I will say no, sell naked puts uh, you know, with some type of a hedge when volatility futures really indicate that we flipped over. Speaking of volatility futures, that is bullish, very bullish on the day. If anything, that's the most bullish thing we've seen. So vol futures dropped in the last three minutes, okay? 
we'll see if that continues. As I said, all you can do right now, okay, all you can do right now is what's right in front of you. Like you have blinders on, okay, it's it's right in front of you, and that's the best you can do. There's days we're going to be able to handicap more effectively, okay, but right now you're in the midst of volatility and noise. Uh, we saw this yesterday, uh, and again, don't be feel like you know pressure to trade. I saw people getting just ripped apart in uh, in short term trades yesterday. I shouldn't say they were getting ripped apart, but they're definitely getting tortured. You know, that's a three minute move. Okay, that took twenty five handles off the market. We rallied back, came back down, exploded back up, came off like that. Okay, which is it is when Jerome Powell started speaking. Okay. Um, and Jerome Powell, I mean, the guy's, come on, he's speaking about, you know, Canada. He's at a Canadian conference, did mention a little bit about interest rates here in the U.S., other than to say, longer for later, later for longer. That's, I've changed the uh, the wording a little bit, but it works for me. Anyway, kind of, you know, relax a little bit out there. You're going to be just fine, okay? Take only positions and setups that you're comfortable with right now, okay? If you're going to hold stuff overnight, if you're going to hold stuff overnight, I strongly urge you in items that you hold overnight that you do in some way, shape, or form, try to define that risk. Obviously, we could see a geopolitical catalyst overnight. Wouldn't be surprised there. Okay, but We can also see explosive moves back up. So uh, economic data, there isn't any this week. Okay, To kind of give you one last look, uh, advanced decline line is still positive. Taking a look at the calendar. Come on, beige book is not exactly going to move us. Like beige doesn't do anything for anybody ever. Um, then we actually have what? Jobless claims tomorrow morning. Oh, the still my heart, the Philly Fed. This is crap. There's no real indicators in here. Last but not least, the rig count. There's nothing. There's nothing in front of us. Okay. Blue skies. We'll see what kind of transpires. Some geopolitical risk could definitely shake up this marketplace. And obviously, again, I know that you know, there's a petroleum status report in 40 seconds. Nobody cares right now. Not even oil cares about its own petroleum status report. Um, it's it's quiet and there's not a lot driving markets, okay? So you're in this volatility crossroads, you know, keep your head in the game, look for uh, some opportunities as we uh, as we go. With that, I am gonna turn it over to the, uh, to the professor. Jeff Bierman's gonna be coming in here momentarily he's going to be talking about getting aligned honing your support resistance plotting skills so uh that's, that's all i got jeff it's all i have is support and resistance plotting skills anyway i have a lot of trades that i want to place but i'm going to let this marketplace kind of dictate when and where i place those so i'm going to be very very careful about entry right now um kind of hold back a little bit Keep okay as much objectivity as you possibly can when you're looking at a marketplace like this. Just because we sold off a little bit and you saw Nvidia scare us doesn't mean the S and P's can't explode back in your face. We saw that numerous times yesterday. At the exact same time, you got to be thinking to yourself: still a lot of traders looking to exit very profitable positions this year, and that constant, oh my gosh, I got to get out. The market looks like it could sell off will keep the marketplace under some duress for the near future. Stay tuned. Jeff Bierman is coming on here 